one of the most important things that we are going to do in this course is to start with the study of motion physics started with the study of motion okay we will also study chemistry you will see that both physics and chemistry both involve motion in a very very big way so in this course you will need to spend quite a bit of time studying motion now motion can be of very different kinds and sometimes it is very interesting like for example when I throw this duster up it was not a very simple form of motion right it went up then it went round turned around quite a bit and then came back so it is rotating and it is moving up and it is moving down so it is do doing something quite interesting but also quite hard if I take this ball and I throw it you can actually see that this ball is also rotating as it is going up. Now that is reasonably complicated form of motion. So we will first start with simple forms of motion and then we will keep moving on to higher and more complicated versions of motion. So everything is moving around us right. So if you look at the uh, like look at people around us. So even though this guy is sitting he is actually moving, he is moving his legs, he is doing this and even if he sits very still or he stands very still his heart is beating so there is movement there blood is flowing there is movement there you are thinking when you are thinking electrons are moving because our entire thinking process what is it electric currents if I want to move my hand like this my brain sends a current and my muscle contracts right in biology there is movement everywhere there, there is nothing in this universe without movement in fact this whole universe is moving now you may think this blackboard was at rest but actually the earth is moving so the blackboard is also moving so everything around us is all the time moving and what we need to do is to figure out ways of studying motion so now when we want to study the basics of motion one very important thing to do is to first figure out what is motion right now before you figure out what is motion we have to first figure out what is the opposite of motion what is the opposite of motion rest, rest. so what is rest object is stationary okay that just simply says if an object is at rest it is at rest it's not a good definition so you should tell me a little bit more sir so, uh, when an object doesn't change its position with respect to time ah that's very excellent the object does not change its position as time changes with respect to time now the point is right now suppose I was walking let us say from here I am walking this way as I am walking at any point in time I am at one particular place so does it mean I am at rest no because I am always at some place at some time the point is rest means your time is changing time is anyway changing so time changes but what does not change position. position does not change so position remains constant or does not change as so this is one part this is the second part position remains the same as time changes what is that that is rest so then what is motion perfect so position changes as time changes now this point is that time always changes you don't have to do very much for it whether the object is at rest or in motion time is anyway progressing changing so you have one second after that you have one more second and then slowly time changes right after one o'clock comes two o'clock so this we don't have to worry much we still have to figure out and measure and something extremely interesting happened almost a hundred years ago there is this very interesting guy who asked very silly questions about time and found some extremely interesting answers one of the things he found that if you think it has been one hour and your friend thinks it is one hour they both use very very accurate clocks and measure is your one hour the same as his one hour mostly yes no if it is one hour one hour everybody is one hour but what he discovered was if you are actually moving very fast then his one hour is different from your one hour when you come back and 
look at it compare it you will find that though they both have changed by one hour or they think they have you will find that their times are not equal or if they come back and check where they come back together they start together and they come back together that means the times must have been equal but usually what happens is you find that the fellow was traveling faster that fellow's time will be slower so this guy might have actually had about 20 hours and that guy would have had only one hour now the guy who came up with this understanding do you know his name albert einstein okay so time is not such an easy thing but let us ignore albert einstein for a minute so if you don't worry about albert einstein then what do we know we think time is simple because you have a clock and the clock keeps moving 12 o'clock 1 o'clock 2 o'clock and so on so as it moves we know that time is changing now as time changes if the position does not change it is at rest and if position changes with time or as time changes then that object is in motion okay so as time changes i have position changing now notice something here we need to therefore define what is time we need to also define what is position and time we will use a clock to define how will we define position like uh, use all um, sorry all the dimensions and find out where it is relative to one point excellent very very important and useful idea okay if i say here and if i say there there is always a problem with that because if i say an object was here and this object is moving like that and after some time it is there you understand here and there but that is because you are seeing it right now suppose you had to use a phone and tell your friend i was here then after some time i went there now what is here and what is there how will they understand when you are talking like that so you need a better way of saying it you say ah i was near that signal no near vallur kottam i was there was a signal that's where i was then i went straight now straight you could have gone this way or that way or that way which straight okay i went straight towards tnagar and then after 20 minutes of walking i forgot that my school was already behind me so i went up and then came back then i saw padma sheshadri on my will you see it on your left or right well if you are walking back you will see it on your right now this kind of description of motion is good that's what we used in day to day language but it is not very accurate because it's very hard to communicate if that person doesn't already know it right you expect that person to know where valluar kottam is you expect that person to figure out where uh, tnagar how to go to, towards tnagar and you need to know when you are coming back right all of this involves lots of language lots of talking now we want a much more precise more mathematical way to talk about motion that's what is important so if i want to do that i can't say here there i can't say let this point be called a then you have to say where is a from a i went to b then from b i went to c and then from c i went to d not bad as long as you know this diagram but not very good if this is going to be the way we are going to tell somebody without having a diagram right so we need a good mathematical representation because without talking about position you can't talk about motion because what is motion position changing with time right so how do i talk about position so this is what we generally do to talk about position we use a very simple idea remember last uh, time we were trying out some experiments if i look at this uh, what is this marker pen and if i basically move this duster forward right i'm pulling it this way i'm going to call that forward now the problem is is the marker pen moving back or moving forward moving back moving forward which did it do well well it looks like it is moving back but how do you know so what do we do we basically put a line here and then we say if it moves like this i'm going to pull the duster like that if the marker pen moves like this we will call it forward if it moves like that we will call it backward 
and if it stays on the same line it is at rest or it's at the same place okay so what we do is we basically create what we call a reference line okay now let us keep this here and then i'm going to pull it which direction did it move let's see again let's do it two three times it moved forward even if i do it very slowly let us check whether it goes forward or back in fact if i do it very slowly it's going forward it's not at rest look, look it came all this way rest would mean it has to remain there now the problem with rest or motion is that it's always relative so you think that he is at rest he is actually moved 17 kilometers in second so in the last 20 minutes he has moved a huge amount of distance but you think he is at rest why because you also moved he also moved this whiteboard also moved everybody moved even i moved so therefore since all of us moved we think we are all at rest but so are you moving or not that depends on who is talking now who is talking this reference line is talking did you go forward well relative to this reference line if i pull you pull this green thing it has moved forward right at no point actually it moves backward so what do i need to talk about uh, motion i need a reference line now we call this line the origin without talking about an origin you can't talk about motion you can't talk about position okay 